What's going on, coaches? How are y'all doing this Sunday? Uh, welcome to my channel. If this is the first time visiting my channel. This I am Coach Mackey. I talk about all things football. If you unlike that, then go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, hit that thumbs up. If you're watching this on Facebook, give me a thumbs up. I what I wanted to go over real quick. I just wanted to. I was supposed to do this the last week uh, yesterday. Fell asleep. Decided to jump on it today. Um. I get asked a lot of questions. How do you run the counter when you have three-foot splits, two-foot splits, or just wide splits in general? Don't you have problems? Well, today I just wanted to go over and show you how you can actually do it and not have that many problems. And you can do it, I promise you. Uh, for those coaches that are thinking about going wide, using wide splits, you can actually do it running the counter tray. And it is a thing of beauty. So let's just dive into it. Johnny, how you doing, sir? Any coaches, if you have any questions, go ahead, put them in the, in the comments. What I'm also going to do is after I do this, I'm going to drop in the comments uh, a link that you can come on and you can ask any question you want because I, I want to make this a call-in show. Guys, you need to jump on instead of just doing the comments. Come on, ask your question. Let's talk some ball. So we're going to talk about the counter tray. So I'm pulling it up right now. Boom. Here's how we run it. Now, here's the first thing that we actually did. We run it only to a three technique. Why? It makes it simpler for my center. I don't want my center to have to block all the way back on a three technique because that is asking a lot from that kid. I want to make things simple. I want him to just have to snap and then block back not snap and block three gaps back, especially when we're that wide. That is why we're doing this. So let's just say for the sake of argument, our uh, counter play is called counter. Let's just go counter right or counter left. We just call counter. It's automatically to the left for some reason in this sake of argument. We come up, if my quarterback sees that where we're running the ball, that is a one technique. He knows he wants to run it to the three technique. I tell him we want to run it to the gap that has a the B gap that has a guy in it. So he'll come up, he'll see that it's not there, and he'll just go, hey, opposite, opposite. And then he'll back up, and then we're good to go. Opposite tells the back we're running it the other way. The line knows that as well. Easy. Why do we also do this? Because in practice, it's really simple. They know, hey, we're only going to run this play Either we can run it against an odd front, that's fine. But if it's an even front, we're only running it to the three technique. Really simple. We like to double the three to the backside linebacker. We like to block back on the shade. We pull kick out for the guard. We wrap around for the linebacker. And then we will read the end. Here's the great thing about this, though, is that since the splits are so wide, you really want it makes the read really simple. Because he's so far away, even if he makes the wrong read, he can just hand the ball off, and then you're running for days. Okay, so this is how we block it up against an even front. I'm going to show you how we block it up against an odd front, and then I've got film. Yes, because, you know, why not? We've got film. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put them in the chat already. I am an open book. I'm just going to put this guy right here. Let's just say we're going up against the stack. And before anyone in the chat... Good morning, Coach. How you doing, man? Uh, before anyone in chat says who gives you three uh, too high like this, you spin down. We threw the ball a lot, so we saw a lot of too high looks, and they actually dropped. Well, there were games where we were, they were dropping eight, and which was a first for me. So in this example, we are blocking here. Up, oh, not like that. We would there. We would go here. Actually, good lord, Ron. We would go here to here to kick out to pull. This is who we're reading. And it this is our steps. Wide split counter football dirty talk. I know, Austin. <laughs> I know, baby. Um, I get asked a lot about the steps. Um, my kid's up. Connor's up. He's going crazy. It, you have to play with it. Some running backs are so slow, they don't have they can just go like it's inside zone. Open cross up, and we hit it at the front side A gap. And then bounce. So it's clear. We do a clear cloudy. Is it clear? Yes, hit it. Is it cloudy? Then bounce outside. Um, some guys are really fast. So they have to take like a little counter step and then come. So it's like an open counter, then open crossover downhill. So you have to play with that. I know a lot of coaches think that's a cop out when I do that, but it's not. You have to mess with the, you have to work on this in practice. Okay. 
So that's how we do it. Um, so let me bring up the film real quick, and I'm going to show you some examples of this. All right. So boom, here we go. So we are in our two by two. We call that ace. We're running counter to this way. Look at the look at the splits. And not that many people believe me when I say that we run wide splits like this. So we got splits. He is his eyes are on the quarterback. And again, the quarterback's just handing it off. Wrapping it around. There we go. We have an actual lane to run in with these wide splits and it works. Okay? It works. My son's about to jump up here in a minute. So you can tell from alignment right now, do you ever have issues with scrape exchanges between the backside? No, we don't. And if it is, I just tell them to read a C gap. Okay. That's what we do right now. And my boy's here. So he's going to come, come say, Hey, and then you got to go downstairs. All right. Here's my, here's my boy. Can you say, Hey, okay. He just woke up from a nap, but I'm going to still do it because this is what we do alignment wise i want the wide receiver to be right there that's where i want him at he had an issue with that so we wanted to get a little bit wider but we're as you can tell again he's not throwing it because he has covered two over two two over two and then that's what we're doing one second hold on we got my whole family in here let me get them out real quick And I'm back. That's what we do, man. That's what. That's the beautiful thing about live. So he didn't throw this. He could have thrown this over here because of this corner, but we didn't. But as you can tell, again, we have all of this space that we are running the ball with. And you just hit it up there. And when you have a guy, I'm going to be completely honest, coaches. We had a guy at running back. So we were able to do this. I want you to just see our splits. Look at those splits. Look at the splits. Look at the splits. A lot of y'all, I've I've kind of gotten some hate online saying that the splits are, are BS. They are not. Remember this. A three technique will always line up as a three technique. They will always do that. So you line up. And then if they do, I know a lot of defensive coaches are watching this right now saying, I would shoot those gaps. You can do that. Then you have other things. That's why it's very important to have an if-then structure. That is what we're diving into into the touchdown lab and during the offseason. Do we have our if-thens? Because you need to have an if-then, and if you don't, and they do start shooting these gaps, you're screwed. But we got look at that. He's going outside. He's running outside. The quarterback is just looking. Can they make the play? No. Now we have it. Now, for some reason, I'm not saying we're perfect either, no one forgot. We just bypassed this guy right there. And he made a play. You can see it right here on the film. Sometimes we had an issue. Nobody. He should be coming down right here to get this guy in this gap. He blocks the man that he should, and he just bypass, just completely bypasses him. And that happens sometimes. They're high school kids. And I show you the good and I show you the bad. Okay. Here's another thing that we tried to do, but our, our quarterback couldn't get it because it was such a condensed season and we were just starting to get this offense in. We had him block a key screen and then a hitch right here. I tried to get him to throw this hitch, but he didn't like it because this guy was right there. He could have. Do you see all that space right there? If you just have him run a three-step hitch and you just throw it like that, that works. But if we cook, if we kick this guy out, we're cooking with grease right there. Didn't work. Again, look at the splits. Anybody who says that I'm full of crap about the splits, I'm going to chop you in the throat. These are our splits right here. This is perfect. And it works. Now we're running bounce. That's our bounce motion. We just want to bounce one side to the other. So we got it going the other way. And then look right there. There's the hole. Now I would have liked to see him 
take a little jab step to allow this guy to come, but he slow played it. That's what he did. And then he gets right behind him, and then boom, there's the wall right there. It can work. You can do it. And then you just make a play. Look at that. Nice and easy. It can work. Let me show you the wad. Now, he could have thrown this key screen. Again, he wasn't very good at throwing it. He didn't really grasp it because he hasn't been in the system for that long. But he could have thrown it to either this side or to this side because we have the numbers. Then my computer, my internet is, is messing up right now. There we go. All right. So let's do another one. These splits, great stuff, coach. Love it. Air Raid 101. Thank you. All right. While this is coming on, I am going to copy. If y'all want to come on and ask a question, come on. Okay. So this was a little adjustment that we actually did. It He fumbled the ball. But we have, we had him back up as a pitch. We are still running our counter scheme right here. The quarterback is still reading the C gap. What does he do? He's coming up the field. So he fakes it. And now he is running the counter. What should have happened was he missed. Notice how he missed. Then he runs it right up there. We It was an awful play, but it's one we did. We fumbled right there. And again, I show the good and the bad. I am not one of those coaches that will show you all the good stuff. You see the good, you see the bla the bad, you see the warts, you see the the unblemished skin Instagram. Okay, that is what we do here. So you again, right now, we're in our bunch set. We're running bounce. The reason why we're running bounce is as the game was going on, I see that this guy they move with the bounce. So if you notice, bounce him over. He is now, he takes himself out of the play. He took himself out of the play and we're running counter back this way. So we have all this space. And I hope this, it, my internet works. So boom, right there. There's the crease, touchdown. This is one of the reasons I started out as an inside zone guy with these kids because that was who I am. And then as the season progressed, I realized they were really good with the inside, I mean, with the counter play. So I was like, piss on it. Let's go full tilt into counter and let's do this. Okay. And that is why we got good at the counter. We got great at it. So let's watch a little bit more clips and then I'm going to have to go downstairs because my son is going nuts. Those that have kids, you know how that is. All right. Here's another one. We're running counter. We're bouncing it again. Now they've wisened up. They don't move out, but I still like it. What we taught, we also taught this. This is We got good enough at it that we had this. Will, will this full video be on YouTube? Yes, sir, it will. We read this now. If this guy runs straight up the field, then we told these kids to forget about him. He's taking himself out and just fold up in it. Notice how he's all the way up the field. He's not looking for anything. So we just do it. Now, again, the quarterback. I'm going to try to find the video. There was one of the thing that we did that in a previous game. I got onto the quarterback right here because he's not carrying out his fake. If he carried out his fake, even though this was our read, he would have held him. That's something you have to do, and that's something I have to get better at. I have to teach them to carry out their fake instead of watching it. And that's something you're going to have to do, too, because a lot of the kids, they want to just hand the ball off. They go back to the middle school mentality of just handing balls off and then just watching. You can't. If he would have stroked this and he would have blocked, we would have done it. OK, we come back to this later on in the game and we do a better job at running it. That was just a bad play. He forgot to put him in motion. I don't know if y'all know this, but sometimes these guys forget to put him in motion. Now, this was my beautiful thing. We called this opposite, and I hope this brings up. 
This is an opposite tag if this is the one I'm talking about. And we run it from the same side. Same side counter. And they determined this. I didn't. They determined this if this is the same. Nope, it's not. Do something else. I'm going to bring this up. So we got bounce again, and I'm going to show you the same side counter. Have you thought about pulling the center as an adjustment versus a three technique? Uh, no, I want to keep things as simple as possible. That's what I want to do. And doing that is just, is just crazy that I didn't want to do. All right. Buy a ticket. Yeah. To watch. I know. Right. Get in the stands if you're going to watch. And that's something, especially if you're coming from a system that doesn't, you're not reading anybody to one that you are, you have to carry out that fake. And that's, that's on me. I'm taking it. I, I didn't put a, a focus on that in practice. I was more worried about on the RPOs or the quick screens or the, the progressions to get those down and not to carry out your fake. That was 100% totally on me. Um, Coach Scott, how many run plays? Let's see. Coach Blue, I see that you're on, and I'll pull you on in a minute. How many run plays do you run total? This year we only had two, inside zone and counter. That's what it was, and they worked. We, we got really good at it. Toward the end, it was really just counter. So we're going here. Um, bouncing it over. And again, we were blocking it up a little bit. Boom, boom. He's coming around. I would like to see a tighter than he makes a play. When you have a kid that can make a play like that, you just let him go. Why don't you run counter and pin and pull with pin and pull rules? I don't know. I'm not smart enough. If I'm being completely honest, I'm not smart. I like counter just this way, and this is the way we're going to do it. I don't want to get into all of that other stuff because to me, they're thinking. And when they think, they play slow. And when they play slow, we get we we hurt. Uh, Adam, what's going on, man? Love your stuff. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate it. Um, how wide are your splits? Is it universal for the whole line, or does it vary from guard to tap? It's universal. Three foot. That's what I want. We may come down to two and a half, but if we get three, I want three, baby. And toward the end of the year, we're having a little bit of problems, and we kind of shortened it a little bit, and that actually hurt us in the long run because we gave them that edge, and we got a lot of sacks toward the end when we kind of Convinced it. Can you run a gift route with that one receiver if the tight end, if the defensive end is unblocked? Are you talking about the single receiver? If you are, yeah. And I'm going to be completely honest. I had all of that in the playbook. I talked to him about it over and over again. He wouldn't throw the gift. And I. it's because I find you have to be in this system for at least two years to, for it to finally click. The previous year, my quarterback – he needed four years. And that fourth year, he got it. He was slinging the ball all over the place. He understood it. This was the very first year this kid was in this system at all, throwing the ball. Uh, we only had like two weeks, and then we only had six games because of COVID. So he didn't really get it. What I had to do was I had to go back and be like, okay, I need to call more quick screens and tell him to throw the ball right now. And that's what we did. So right here, this is our stack formation. We could have thrown the screen if we wanted to. This was a check with me. We were doing really well with the counters. So there we go. We're running a counter again. And they stopped it. They stop it sometimes. And I know what y'all are thinking right now. This kid dances too much. I'm telling you right now, he is special. So it's one of those times where you just got to take it. And what could have made this better was if he threw the ball. And this something on the sideline when we had the pads. We were like, hey, look at this. Throw the ball. And he kind of got it toward the end, but this was, I think, the third game, fourth game, so he wasn't fully developed. So if they are stopping it, you can go back, if you are allowed to, to look at the film and call more screens. And that's what we did right here. This cat just shot the gap, and that's what happens. He, claw he, made, he made a good play. And that's something, as coaches, we need to do a better job of offensively, is sometimes we just go, hey, Defense made a play. Kudos. Hats off to you. Just get what you can and get down. And that's not what he did. I mean, look, he made something out of nothing. All the dancing. I'm going to let that happen from time to time. Uh, have you ever watched Corona Sentinel High School highlights? I have not, Coach. But if you link them up, I will look. This is Coach Roberto from Mexico. Do you rather run? Ah, see, that's a good question, Coach. If you would have asked me before this year, I would have said inside zone. After this year, 
freaking in, uh, counter. I love it. It is it. It was my play. It's what I've been looking into along among other things in the off season. I love counter. I can't say a good uh, enough good things about it. Uh, when using three foot splits, what adjustments or automatics do you if so if they're going to blitz the a gap right away? Um, <laughs> well, first off, if they're doing that, and if I see that, hopefully I see it on film. I'm throwing the ball. I'm I'm running uh, swing for the running back and throwing it out there and letting him get his thing because if they're shooting the gaps like that and you would think that's what they a lot of teams did but they didn't you just they wouldn't trigger that but if they do two things one you're now getting that if then game that that coaching ghost and that's a horrible place to be at and that just leaves you down the rabbit hole where you have to start adding plays into your playbook just because just in case. But if they do that, then they're they're leaving the outsides open. So then you adjust and you start hitting them on the outside really fast. And I promise you, they'll back up out of that. Uh, coach, yeah, play the next play. That's what we did. Play the next play. Coach, do you ever base the front side and pull for both inside linebackers? No. I'm telling you, man, we are straight down, pulled the old school counter. I don't get uh, into all of that other stuff that you can do because, again, I want things to be simple. I don't want to have a lot of different tags. If I'm going to have a tag, it's going to be like you saw earlier, the fake, the toss, and go, or run bash away from it. But I am not messing with those blocking rules at all. That is not what I'm doing. Uh, Scott, with wide splits, do you still have Lyman D, uh, double on? Ins no, when we go the inside, I just want to cover them up. That's kind of what we did. We started off with uh, you know tight and then kind of are trying to get that double team. Didn't like it at all. I want to cover him up and let my back, as you can tell, he's pretty good, make make the uh, right read and everything like that. And, hey, guys, I appreciate you in here. We got over 75 people watching. If you're finding any value in this, could you give it a thumbs up? I really Can we get 100 thumbs up on this and likes? Because I really freaking want that. Uh, it, let, it triggers people, gets them in, because I want them to see that you can. You can run counter. With wide splits, everyone, when I tell them that, they look at me like I've got egg on my face, and it's not true at all. You can actually run them with the wide splits. Uh, good stuff, Coach. We are tuned in out here in Rhode Island. Love how you're honest about what you are and love your belief in your guys. Yeah, hey, I am not one of those people. I've, I talked to one of the coaches, said that uh, everything I've looked up on you, you're 100% honest. I am. I don't want i show you the good. i show you the bad. i talk about what we do. If I don't do it, I'll tell you so. I'm not going to act like I am the man and everything I do is correct. It's not. All right. Great stuff. I appreciate it, coach. High fives and butt slaps. You know it. How do you pull with a uh, – with a? we don't, coach. What we do is we only run it to the three technique. We never – I wouldn't say never, but we go in with the game plan. We run it toward the three. Sometimes it messes up. You know, that's just the game of life, and we try to block it. To the, uh, we run it to a one and block back on the three. But if I can do it, we are running to the three technique always. And I give my quarterback the ability to check opposite. He knows we want to run it to the closed B gap. So if I call it to the right and the closed B gaps to the left, then he's going opposite, opposite. All right. Do you run midline? No, we don't. I don't run midline at all. I'm not that kind of guy. Very informative. Love the splits. I appreciate it, coach. I uh, see. Yeah, we got people in there. Best running football. You are absolutely right. Um, when your counter gets stuffed multiple times, do you start going away from it in the game or do you just dedicate? I'm going to be completely honest. I would like to sit here and say that I, uh, we stay with it and we're like, you know what, baby? It's like Novocaine. Just give it enough time and it'll work. But if it gets stuffed, if it's getting stuffed, that means a couple of things. One, our kids can't block it well. So why are we going to keep on running it during this game if they're not blocking it right? Or two, they have a lot of people in the uh, box, so they're they have other places where we can attack them. We've got to find those places and start attacking them. Are they putting everybody in the box? Then what are they doing on the flanks? Are are they getting in our face and then bringing it? Well, we can go deep, and that's what we did on that previous game. They started uh, closing in, we started hitting them on four verts. So it's that if then if they're going to take this away, then they're giving something else up. It's your job as a coach to find what that is. Um, do you run the QB on counter with the fake? We've tried it. I didn't want to do that this year just because my quarterback this year, this was his first time playing quarterback since ninth grade. He played it for JV on ninth grade. His 10th grade year tore his knee up, didn't play the whole year. 
His 11th grade year tore his knee up, didn't play the whole year. Senior year, he wasn't supposed to be the quarterback, but the old quarterback before I got there transferred to a charter school. So he had to step in and be a quarterback. I wanted to make things as simple as possible for him. I didn't want to him to run because he was a little nervous about his knees. So we just worked on things that he did really well. And guys, I'm going to tell you, he made all state as a quarterback. He broke records at the school that were stand, stood for like 25, 26 years just by making it simple. And so to answer your question, no, I didn't. <laughs> Are you running inside zone with the same splits? Yes, sir. We do not change the splits based on the call because that's a tell. We still run the same thing. Everything is with these splits right here. Okay, so let's watch a little bit more film. I want to get to the one where, see, right now he should be throwing it because we have we have the numbers out here. He didn't. That's my fault because I didn't teach him well enough for it. Right here, this is our blue-green fast motion. We're going to motion him out the backfield. We're going to influence, and then we are going to go. Motion, they go, boom. See, here's what I'm talking about right there. Notice the guy off the edge. He flew up, so our guys didn't even matter. They're like, you know what? We think that he is better, so we're going to plant, and he's going to get up. We're not even going to worry about this guy right here, and that's what he does. He immediately gets up the field, and we score a touchdown right there. Will that work for you? I don't know, but it worked for us. Is it unsound? Hell yeah, it is. I'm going to be completely honest. It is 100% unsound, but for some reason, it freaking worked, and we just we stuck with it. This was the game, too, on one of them. We saw it on the previous game. Hey, this guy keeps going up. One of the kids came to us, and this is the beautiful thing about having a system also and you allowing, you teaching your players the why and giving them a say in the system. The previous game before this, the guard was like, hey, Coach, that guy's so far up there, and he's going up the field. Do you mind if I just cut it up and don't even worry about him? And me and the O-line coach, we looked at each other, and we're like, oh, shit, that sounds halfway smart. Let's let's try it. So we tried it, and it worked, and we kept doing it over and over again. We kept having success. So that's that's what we do. All right. Uh, bash Q counter is money if you're a quarterback and run. You're absolutely right, Coach Blue. Absolutely right. And that's one thing. You're you're right here, man. Great minds. Right here, dude. That's what, I, what I've been looking at this year about doing. Uh, Nick, really enjoy your stuff. I appreciate it, man. If you enjoy it, and if any of y'all enjoy it, give me a thumbs up, man. Smash that thumbs up button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Um, how do you teach the pulling tackle on a crashing DN? Uh, wrong arm. So you're talking about if, let's say, a left. This is my left hand, guys. Pulling to the right, and that DN is crashing. Well, if we pull right, hit right. That's what we're doing and just knock it out. And it, we're not talking about the the guard should be kicking him out and the tackles wrapping around. That's what we do. Uh, Tony, what's going on, man? How you doing? Jeff, great job, guys. I appreciate it. Blake, coach, with these front side and backside gift screens, why are your receiver splits not wider to stretch the defense more? Is it the quarterback arm strength? I'm not talking Baylor splits, but on the numbers, it's uh. This was the first time we went spread, and they weren't used to it, and they kept lining up that close. I, I mean, I'm being completely honest. That's why. Uh, previous years, if quarterback wasn't good, we'd bring him in, and if he could, bring him out. This year, we should have our quarterback had a cannon. He was a really good thrower. It's just they were misaligned, and we I didn't do a good job on doing that. I was just worried about getting the plays in. Because we had a condensed season. And, um, you know, this is the first year I was worried more about plays than formations and everything. I know that's not coach speak that I should be talking about all this stuff, the technical details and everything like that, being completely transparent. I didn't put enough emphasis on that. This was a smaller school, didn't have enough coaches on that side of the ball that knew it, the offense that well. So I was coaching everybody, and it wasn't the top of my uh, list right there. Um, how do you adjust with teams that run double four eyes? Luckily, we didn't have it. Actually, we had, man, and it worked really well. It worked really well against the four eyes because the front side four eye, we're washing him down. The back side four eye, I told the quarterback then to adjust. And uh, let's see if I can't find one over here. We teach to read the C gap, not a player. So we would, let's say this guy's a four eye, we're reading this area right here. And if you can pull it and get it, go. Do it. Don't make things more complicated than they are. If you see grass, take grass. It's that whole philosophy right there. I want you to see 
the motion. So we do the motion right here. Nothing happens. Watch what it does, though. It pulls this guy. He's a defensive end, and he's flying out there with the motion. Why? I don't know, but he just took himself out of the play. And this guy right here is running straight up the field. I mean, there was nobody there. Touchdown. Nice and easy. Uh, do you read the backside in man on the line of screen? Yes, I do. We read the C gap. Someone in that C gap is he's crashing and you know you pull it and go. That sounds halfway smart. That yeah, man. Hey, that's the beauty. I, I realized this year, and this is that this is something that I changed coaching philosophy that I'm gonna keep going for the rest of, of my tenure as a coach. I made it so that we were in Corona. I was gonna enjoy every single practice every single scrimmage that we had, every single game. I was going to enjoy being with the kids. I was just going to be happy with what we had because I didn't know when we were going to go on a, a uh, quarantine. I didn't know if the season was going to get canceled. So I went in with, I am not going to scream. I am not going to yell. I'm going to keep an open mind. And I learned things this year that I never would have learned if this, this virus would have happened. And I just, if you haven't played it yet, go in with that same mind frame. I let my kids talk me into doing different things. I let us, for the instance, just on counter, I let my tackle and guard talk me into bypassing the front side guy if he shoots straight up the field. Never would have done that if it wasn't Corona. I allowed my my running back and quarterback to talk about doing the opposite, going on the same side running counter. Never would have done that. Passing wise, I gave my quarterback the freedom to change and adjust concepts if he wanted to. So if I call a pass and he sees that it's a quick screens open or if sticks open a corner, he can adjust. I actually went in sometimes just giving him a check and he was able to call the play based on what the defense was doing. I was doing all of this stuff just because this year I was like, you know what? Let's get weird. <laughs> you have a get out of jail for free card. Let's get freaking weird. Um, do these wide splits affect your pass pro? No. When we kept, like I said, later on, we had a bunch of injuries. The offensive line coach was like, hey, I'm, I'm, can we cut them down just a little bit? Because we had third and fourth string guys in. I said, yes. And then we started getting sad. We threw the ball, um, let's, I want to say close, it was over 100 times throughout this year. We only gave up about eight to 10 sacks, and that was toward the end of the year. So we didn't have a problem with it. Um, dart coach. No, my tackles aren't good at all. We're not doing dart. I thought about it. They're not good. <laughs> uh, we start football in three weeks in Washington state. Any advice in coaching through COVID you could give us West coast coaches? Um, yeah, enjoy it. I I'm serious, man. I know that sounds woo woo. Enjoy every flipping second that you have it. Cause you don't know when it's going to happen. Um, get your base stuff in both offensively and defensively. Take your playbook, cut it in half. Take those plays, which ones are good, get rid of the rest. And I promise you, you are going to have success. You do that both offensively and defensively, and you will have success. The other thing is it's, it's something that's difficult that you don't think about until you do the social distancing. Like you really need to work on that. You can't crowd around and, and hold up a folder or anything like that. So Google Classrooms are huge if you can get a lot of stuff inside on that. So you can uh, give them the information before you go out there and just be simple. Like as simple as simple can be, man. I promise you. Uh, creates passing and running lanes. You're absolutely right. Let's get it a little bit more film. I'm trying. No, not that one. I'm trying to find the one where, okay, here's another one right here. New game going on it. We've got to tell already right here. Got to tell. He's already doing it, but he's kicking, rapping, and then we just get up. Bounce and then just do what it is that you do. Okay? I'm going to show you all one more. I'm going to I'm going to find it real quick where we run the opposite. And it is so nasty. All right, here it is. Okay? So this is our opposite tag, which means, hey, we're running, we're running it to the right. So this would be counter right opposite. He stays on the same side. He's going to go. Once he sees this man pull, he's going to plant and get up. So watch. He's on the same side. Cross face. 
and freezes because he's like, oh my goodness, this guy's coming to me. I'm going to get a nice little tackle. And he plants, gets up the field. Nice and simple. And I'm going to show the wide version real quick. So again, plant, get up the field. North and south as fast as possible. That's how it is. Okay? So there you go, coaches. That's the thing. You can run counter, wide splits. I super promise. Oh, before we go, I just wanted to, since y'all are here, I've got a little surprise announcement. I haven't told anybody this yet, but y'all are going to be the first. This Saturday, I am doing a mini workshop with Coach Kenny Simpson on the buck sweep. I love the buck sweep. Might I might implement it in the next year. So I'm bringing him on, and we've got an early bird special. Okay, It's only good for 10 coaches. So if you want to join the mini clinic this Saturday, there's the link right there in the chat. It'll be in this description. Go ahead and get that. It's going to be amazing. Thank you all for being here. I hope to see you on the mini clinic. I hope that you freaking use these splits too. The splits work. And until next time, let's continue to match the spread, score points, and have fun. I will see you all later.